Hello, good morning everybody. I'm delighted to have been asked to give a presentation here to welcome you all again. I know Jane's done it already, but to welcome you. As, as Jane said, I'm the Dean of Research in the College of Science and Engineering here in the University of Edinburgh. And Jane, I think, has made an excellent overview of uh, the interaction in informatics with the strengths, the research strengths in informatics. I thought I'd take a little bit of time to place it in the wider context of the college and the wider university. So in the College of Science and Engineering, what does the Dean of Research uh, do? Well, mainly my job is to make sure that we harness the skills and strengths in combination across the different schools that Jane has already talked about. So as the College of Science and Engineering, we have seven schools and associated centers. They have biology, chemistry, engineering, geosciences, informatics, mathematics, and physics and astronomy. But we also uh, go further out to that. We engage with the other two colleges the College of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences, where more and more we're thinking about ethical perspectives, economic perspectives, business perspectives, and even more around, not even more, I think also as much with the College of Medicine and Veterinary Medicine, where there's a huge interest in terms of health and care, how we develop tools and technologies and how we implement them in partnership with people by not really implementing, not really forcing technologies onto people, but working together to develop and co-create new technologies, new interventions. So that's a great job for me. I think probably 20 years ago, 10 years ago, my colleagues would be saying everything happened in schools. Now, as we all know, that a lot of things happen that really interesting interfaces between schools. And, 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 and what we've found is the growth of multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary centers, hubs, the sorts of things we're talking about here has really taken off because colleagues, researchers, um, at all stages of their career are motivated to make a difference. I know a lot of my PhD students come in saying they want to do things in net zero or they want to do things which apply to sustainability. So Jane talked a little bit earlier about REF and I thought it might be worth taking a little bit of time just to think about REF to celebrate once again, say thank you to IOG for the impact contribution they made. So those of you that don't know about REF, this is a thing that we torture ourselves with in the UK every seven years or so. We go through a big program where we do an internal evaluation of every university, and we look at different aspects. We look at research, and we look particularly now in a more growing sense in impact. What difference do we make uh, economically and in partnership with others in other aspects? And so, as Jane said, we're celebrating this year. We've just got our REF results. And we, it's really underlined the fact that we have quality and breadth. We have real strength in depth across the university. I'm proud to say that across the college, all of our schools, when measured with something called research power, which is measuring the quality the, and, the, and the scale of what we do, we're, we're in the top five in the UK. And I'm also proud to say, Jane's here, so I'll mention it again, informatics is number one in the UK. So that's, if you like, a ho historic recognition of the work that we've been doing, not on our own, not isolated, but in combination with partners such as IOG to develop this new opportunity. And just to unpick what a top scale means, a top mark means in um, REF, it's described as world leading. So there's a peer review panel who sit there and say, this is world leading, this is agenda setting work. So it's a real recognition. So thank you once again for your contribution there. We have scale, we have around, um, 6,000 undergraduates, something like 2,000 postgraduate researchers. We have around 2,000 staff, of which about 1,400, 1,500 are academic research staff. So we have that scale. And each of these are really trying to set the agenda, push the boundaries of what's happening. Our turnover in the college is around a third of a billion per annum. So there's a lot we can do, and we're trying to do ever more. Jane was talking about the ecosystem that we're in. As I say, these multidisciplinary centers but also this data-driven innovation activity. And this is a part, this is funded through the UK government with something called the Edinburgh and South East Scotland City Region Deal. So we're proud to be the first civic university in the UK. We are in Edinburgh, part of Edinburgh, and we work together with our colleagues within the, the council, within the local region. And a lot of what we're talking about is research, it's innovation, but of course it's also teaching and training. It's that next generation. It's what some people call capacity building, which I think is a rather strange way to say the next generation of really um, uh, entrepreneurs, businessmen, researchers, 
all those people that we need to go out and make a difference in the world. So I think it's fascinating. I'm a chemist, so Jane was saying she doesn't know much about blockchain. I probably know even less. But I can really see that this, this partnership, which I gather has been forged over, overnight successes are never overnight, are they? And I gather this has been a patiently, a, a really good interactive uh, relationship that's grown over something like six years and is now culminating in the research hub and the activities we're seeing today. So I think we're, we're in a really interesting time, aren't we? We've talked about looking backwards to REF and saying you're sort of celebrating the past and saying this is the bricks, you know, the, the, the ground on which we're going to build new activities and new research. But I think actually, we, of course, we should now be looking forward and we have a really interesting context at the moment, don't we? We have the context, I think we were, Charles and I were talking about COP27 and the challenges of, okay, everybody is now stating they're going to talk the talk and they're going to walk the walk. Well, in fact, they have talked the talk. They're now going to walk the walk. How do we measure that? How do we say that, okay, that's, people are hitting net zero. This is a really interesting contribution. How are we going to do that? I start thinking as a, I was talking to Charles again, the application space is potentially vast. This data information, how we can have tr trusted exchange of information and how we can do this in a sustainable way. The irony would be, of course, to look at sustainability and not do that itself in a sustainable way. So one of the things we're really proud of in the university, we, we're, we're in the, if you look at world rankings, we're in the top 20 universities in the world generally, and we're really proud of that. We're particularly proud that in the QS world rankings this year, there's been a sustainability index published. And the University of Edinburgh is fourth in the world out of 700 universities and first in the UK. And that's a really important recognition that, if you like, we are, all, we are talking the talk and walking the walk. We're doing it internally in how we run ourselves sustainably, but also sustainability is embedded in the things that we do. We're trying to make sure that's inherent in the things that we do. So that's, I think, a really fascinating challenge in this area, but a really nice challenge about how to build, how to utilize these technologies for good, how to utilize them in a variety of different application areas, and to make sure that we have sustainability in everything, in everything we do there. So I'm really looking forward to, to hearing this morning about the conference, about the activities that are going on. I really do think this is a signature partnership. So once again, thank you to IOG for your past contributions and what I know will be growing contributions in this space. I'm really interested to think about that applications pull. Where are the, the, the opportunities seem vast to me. Where are the, the, the low hanging fruit, if you like, in that dreadful phrase? Where, are, where is the low hanging fruit? Where are the application spaces that really need to be developed? And how do we make that? I, I'm really interested in the research hub and how you stimulate, how we stimulate this interdisciplinary connectivity and how we then uh, generate the leaders that are going to take on the research and innovation into the future. So once again, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity pre to present. Really looking forward to it. I hope to meet many of you this, uh, during the day and hear about the presentations. And thank you for coming, everybody.